closing episode of Valley Veterans Forum for the year 2015 documents the events that occurred last month at the Clovis Veterans Memorial District to celebrate and memorialize Veterans Day 2015. Proudly serving our veterans and our community since 1946, the Clovis Veterans Memorial District honors and memorializes those who served in the armed forces. The facility, which is located at 5th Street and the newly renamed Veterans Parkway in Old Town Clovis, was extensively remodeled in 2007 and, hosts, and boasts a large auditorium, several meeting rooms, and an expansive ballroom, which is perfectly suited to conferences and events of all types. The site is a permanent living memorial to those men and women who participated in the wars and conflicts from the Second World War to the present. From a personal standpoint, I've found great satisfaction in the last year in attending the veterans classes held every Monday morning and conducted by noted Valley author Janice Stevens. We wish all of our viewers a very Merry Christmas and a prosperous and peaceful New Year. <laughs>
But this beautiful country that we have, this beautiful community of Clovis that we have, we wouldn't be able to celebrate uh, and enjoy many of the things we have if it wasn't for them. So I really appreciate that. I appreciate this unveiling today, and thank you all for being here. We're going to enjoy a beautiful concert by the Clovis uh, Community Band. I encourage all of you to come on out. Uh, throughout the morning and into the afternoon, we're going to have uh, some documentaries playing in our uh, theater. I want you to come on out. From noon to 5, we're going to have uh, a short documentary of a certain period. In this case, we'll start with World War II. And then we're going to have uh, veterans from that period. This facility is open to you because of the grace and support of our uh, citizens here at Clovis. So join us in celebrating today and ask questions, and if you see a veteran, stop, say thank you. A patriotic American march widely considered to be the magnum opus of composer John Philip Sue's act of U.S. Congress. It is the official national march of the United States of America. In his autobiography, Marching Along, Sousa wrote that he composed the march on Christmas Day, 1896. It was first performed at Willow Grove Park, just outside Philadelphia, on May 4th, 1897, and was immediately greeted with enthusiasm. Stars and Stripes Forever. <laughs>
these years, I don't have a score. So, what that means is I'm not uh, able to identify before you have to stand up. But when it's your turn to stand up, it's your service branch that's being played, and you need to stand up. So we get to have some leaders out there. You'll recognize your piece. Please stand up, because I won't be able to tell you. Okay. Armed Forces, Pride of America.
Janice Stevens, and Jake. it's November 11th, 2015, and my huge honor to be involved with events here at Clovis Veterans Memorial District. We are doing a book signing, and several of my veterans from my veterans group have published their books. These are books that I have compiled from my veterans. There's about 100 veteran stories in each book. World War II stories are in the first, the stories of service. Valley Veterans Remember World War II. And the second book is Valley Veterans Remember World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and the Cold War. We started collecting these stories in a group of about eight people way back in March of 2002. Since then, that little group has grown to a very large group of about 65 veterans that meet every Monday morning, 9.30 to 11.30, right here at Clovis Veterans Memorial District. Uh, at that time, we have a videographer, we have a photographer, and we have a person tape recording and taking minutes of everything that takes place in that room. It's living history, and it's a treasure trove of military personal experiences. And so some of that history is fading. And without the recorded word, it's gone. And, and each Monday morning when people share these experiences, we get that personal experience. They don't see themselves as heroes. We do. They're all heroes to us. And their story is matter of fact. This is where I was, and this is what I did. And it's everything from XPOWs and what their capture and their captivity was like, all the way to the point of, of just being stateside and feeling like they really didn't do anything, but yes, they did. So it's an honor to be involved. It's one story at a time, one report at a time, and then it accumulates and becomes a book. And there is a therapeutic value that comes out of sharing that story and then recording that story. Their experience is validated. They are validated. They see their worth, and they see a grateful nation. So it works well for these folks. We're able to have all these memorabilia to share, you know, and I'm sharing with a lady here about, <laughs> about some of the family history. <laughs> very interesting. He lived a very colorful yeah. life. I was trying to figure it out. You got Gilbert, you got... Gilbert was the oldest Stanford. one. Harold? Harold was killed at Omaha Beach, oh. age 18, June 30, 1944. Yeah. Huh? You only 80? No, that was, that was 2010. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're behind time. Oh, you're look, you, you looking good. Man. You're, you're looking, looking good, good, isn't it?
citizens of Clovis, thank you for your service and sacrifice. You, my dear friends, are part of that 1% that stand tall in protecting of our freedom. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start the event by bringing in our national colors. So would you please join me by standing up as we bring in our colors. to post colors. Post colors. Colors about face. Please remain standing for the singing of the National Anthem. Ms. Tremblay will join us today and sing the National Anthem, a student from Fresno State University. says, he who honors me, I will honor. And so first and foremost, we honor you. Lord, bless all of us gathered, we pray, and keep us always in your care. Bless our families and our loved ones. Each one of us who is a veteran thanks you tonight for the honor and the privilege to have served our beloved country in uniform. Tonight, we also pause to remember our brother. 
brothers and sisters in arms, serving close to home or around the world, many of them in harm's way. I ask a special blessing for the Clovis Veterans Memorial District and for those who've worked hard to make this day a success. And of course, we ask you to bless the food and the drink and the good times to the nourishment of our bodies and the refreshment of our spirits. To quote from a beautiful old hymn, Balm may our land be bright with freedom's holy light. Protect us by thy might, great God our King. Lord God, let it be so. For we pray all this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Council member from Clovis, come up here and lead us in that Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, 